In this video, traders, we are going to look at why are prior highs and lows so essential for day trading. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. All right, so prior highs and lows essential for day trading. Why are they so key? I know we talk about them loads, talk about how they're essential, but why are they essential? What's the point of them? Why do we need to look at them? So there's a couple of reasons why. And we've got a chart here, there's our daily chart, and it could be you know a currency pair, it could be an index in the pit hours, it could be commodity, it could be a stock, it could be anything. But ultimately, here's a high of day one, there's our low of day one, there's our close. So day two, we're kind of extrapolating those out into day two. So why do we do that and why is it so important? So the first thing is, is that everyone sees them. Okay, unlike a support or resistance level intraday, so you could argue perhaps not a great one, but you could argue that there's a support level there and you extrapolate that to day two. That's just subjective, right? Yes, many people may well see the same thing, but it's not as clear, it's not a definitive level as the high. The high is the high tick, there's no ambiguity to it, it's got a number to it. You know, that number could be 103.51 or whatever it is. That's it, there's no ambiguity to it. That's the official high of yesterday, a low, let's say that's 100.02. That's it. There's no there's no ambiguity to it. The resistance support level could be there. Might some people might agree with it, some people might not, some people might have different levels. So that's the only thing that stays constant. The close, the high low. Now I appreciate the close is different for some of the currency pairs. The high low isn't, it is what it is. And the same for your swing trading as well, the for day trading, but it's the same for swing trading. You know, the months high, the months low is an actual number. There's no ambiguity to it. There's no argument with it. So everybody sees it. Everybody knows where it is. Everybody has it on their chart. That's it. And that when everyone knows that something's there and you know that everyone's looking at it, then there's opportunity. Opportunity really presents itself. And so basically, you know, think about what a high or how a high or low is formed. It's a group vote on value. One, it's not one person has decided to buy above 51. You could have gone in, if you were in the market in the actual exchange and paid 52, and you would have changed the high of the day for everybody across the world. Just think about that for a second. That's why the market's so challenging because you know, how, or, or does it, how does that affect how other people react? You know, one tick could have been enough to cascade a load of stops and take out another 10 points, uh, 10 ticks. And then let's say that was enough to bring in other time frame buyers. So, so challenging and, and interesting in the market that you know, that's a group vote on the highest value at that point in time. No one person decided to pay one penny more. And the same to the downside. No seller decides to pay one penny less, get one penny less, that was it. And so that's why it's such a key level. It's not like, a, 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 admittedly, it's only a, a period of time that, but it is still a period of time that, again, all human beings are working off. A day is a day, right? You know, sunrise, sunset, that's a day. Everyone's working off that as well. And if that's happening in that period of time, then all of a sudden it becomes meaningful to everybody. And it's a reference point for strength and weakness. You know, many people, many technicians, and many people who are making decisions on a bigger scale than us are saying, okay, well, the market is above the prior day's high. That's considered a strong market. It's below the prior day's low. That's considered a weak market. It's below the month's low. It's below, it's a 52 week low, 52 week high. Whatever it may be, that's considered strong or weak. And everyone kind of almost agrees on that. Yes, some people might be looking to fade that, of course, but it's still considered as a strong stock. You know, it's up at highs. It's a weak stock as opposed to being above an arbitrary support level in the middle of a range. Yes, some people might consider that some strength, but it's not everyone saying, well, we can't argue with it. It's at highs. Um, and then great trades are generally made around these levels. So to me, if you look at, you'd have to look at a chart. How many times do we you know, fake through a level and it presents a great opportunity on the short side before driving lower. How many times do we get where we hold above a high and that's really the start of a, a momentum ignition trade? How many times when we gap above out of the range and we get a gap if we're trading something that's got a gap attribute to it? How many times does that really ignite a good, strong opportunity, whether it's a gap fill or whatever? How many people are getting stopped? How many people are putting stops above highs or lows? I mean, you might even do it yourself. So how many people in the whole trading world are using that as a level to activate stops or limits? You know, a lot of people. 
And so great trades are initiated at these levels and also they're useful for targets. You know, if you're in a trade, ignore that for a second. If you're in a short trade, let's say you've managed to get into this short trade here for whatever reason, you know, where's a good trade for a day trader? It's going to be a flush through these lows. So in other words, you know, a little spike through on some volume that pushes back up. You know, you'll be buying into those stops all day long if you were short from highs. Yes, you might have a longer term thesis, but you know that potentially where it could pause and where everyone's watching. So again, it comes back to point one. Everyone sees it. It's running down, running down, running down to that low. Everyone's looking at that low. You know there's going to be a lot of stops to that low. And very often you see it, particularly on the DAX and stuff like that, when it hammers through the low, there's an immediate kind of flush liquidity vacuum, a big run. And so, you know, everyone's looking at it. So it's really important, guys, to have your highs and lows on and not just mark them on as such, but to really kind of understand the significance of them. A high or low might just on a choppy, quiet day is pretty meaningless, right? But a high or low on a big, wide range day that's kind of changed trend intraday and all this stuff is pretty significant because that's the level where, you know, train was running up, bang, 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 and then it just stopped and it just rolled back down again and that becomes really super significant you know that's when your supply demand is shifting um so yeah super important guys having your prior highs and lows on if you haven't got them on you know well worth doing well worth studying how your particular market acts around highs and lows in the particular environment you're in if you're in trending environment if you're mean reversion environment you know there's some great trades to be had uh, around those key levels all right take care and keep your risk managed whatever you're doing i'll see you in the next one goodbye